kid We're the only ones to make her brighter The only ones to make her better The only ones to make an impression With our sweat and blood Every breath of our lives With trust in God We will lift our homeland high We believe in togetherness We'll build a land of progress with the spirit of an umbra, with the spirit of an umbra, with the spirit of an umbra, states we love. Any 
I mean, anything else will have to be done. But I find the I'm very grateful. I'm very brief because I do have a long day. I do have a resource to talk about. I'd like to start by making the point that in these days, the word youth seems to be in people's minds who know something negative. Which is very, very awful, which is very, very wrong, and which is a complete misrepresentation of that world. Because if you go to the history of the world, the greatest people and the greatest achievements of the world have been made by people who are maybe 130 years old and not over 40 years old. So it is the young people, it is the youth who have made the world. What it is to be. Whether it's in uh, an IT or in anything else, and so on. In Nigeria, let's look at it. Uh, Tony and Ango moved in motion for Nigeria's independence at the age of what? 26? At the age of 26. It was a member of parliament. They moved in motion for Nigeria's independence. But after the award, was leading as a young man who was in his 40s. And the rest of the world were doing Nigeria. And team four. Um, the three youngest in the parliament, the 21 years old, and team four, uh, the late former uh, leader in the uh, previous state, uh, Melchior Lukilo, and the Pacific President of the who will be celebrated in his 90th birthday in uh, the next week or two. They were 21 years old, they were in the parliament, they were in their minds, and so on. And if you come to other areas, uh, a narrow hole, perhaps you could tell me sitting here before me. <laughs> when he goes out of uh, the Jackson School, right? Jacksonia. Uh, he was managing director of uh, the folks who are in the school. At what age? And uh, so on and so forth. The energy of Axel Bank is not yet to be. Maybe he does not remember. The first account he had in the shell. When I was in the chair. He walked up to the young man. He said, I'm not here because of my father's day, I'm here because of me. And I want business to show. And he got business to show before he left because he made a very strong profession. So, um, we're here to, to celebrate our youth and to ensure that we are progressing and we've got following all the other youthful people who are very nice to our children. Today, as we speak, Nigeria is a young country because about 60 to 65 percent of our population are one of the major tenets of the present time. So Nigeria is a young country. Africa is a young country. Now, this youthful population can make or map our country. If you look at opportunities, Creating to help themselves, to support the country, good education, good opportunities to move Nigeria to the next step. That's the positive side. If it doesn't happen, and the new process, and there is the new process, the new policy very much within this country. Maybe not as much in our president as it is in others. But if the new process is set, like it's a setting, don't manage to The country will go on fire. Because the youths are pressing. It is their opportunity. It is their time. We will be the elders. We will be the authority. Anybody who is in position will have to do something to help them to realize their ambition, to realize their destiny, and continue to contribute to the knowledge of the country, to the well being of the world and to stand shoulder to shoulder with their counterparts everywhere else around the world. I was in the US in September on a uh, part of the United Nations and I was talking to a young lady from California. We were talking about Nigeria, about our things. And I said, well, I'm um, trying to push them to catch up with you. 
in America. It says, look, don't take cash. You have to do postcards. You have to have postcards. You have to go straight to the seals. So it is possible because it's happening to everyone else in the world. And my prayer is that the Nigerian system must provide every opportunity, every space for my country to realize the society and to consider the country. I welcome all of you, and I'm sure you are very I think um, not many people will go into the full story of our system, uh, but I think the better tool by Herbert and, and the Ivory. So I will not um, attempt to do a lot more of that. But I will say that Herbert is very um, glad with the pace of development in Anambra State and with the activities of the SNC uh, over the last four or five years. And so we, we truly want that to work with, with the state in any way, shape, or form uh, to aid the innovation and, and, and strides being taken in the states. And that's why we are part of what's going on this morning. In that bank, we believe that banking should not be traditional. Banking should not uh, stick to the old norms. And that's why we have a team part of our partners access more. Because the bank should be more to individuals. The bank should be more to society. The bank should be more. The bank should not only be involved in financial transactions, the bank should be involved in human trust development. And we feel that uh, that is what we want to be driving now going forward as we aim to improve and increase ourselves in the communities that we serve. As we all know, 16 years ago, 17 years ago, two young men, I, Elbuje and Herbert, um, walked into a very small bank in those days, what we call the fourth division player. We know there are, there are several divisions in football, but the third and the first division, second and third and fourth. In 2002, Access Bank was what we call the fourth division of Nigerian Banking League, or the Tiny Bank. And they went in there. And then the first thing they did was to assemble a crop of professionals to manage the bank with them. That's when some of us joined in that, in that uh, activity. 16 years down the line, Access Bank is currently my dad with the bank. By by almost everything, uh, if you look at five pieces, three of the five pieces, as a bank is not normal. Uh, we are not just the Nigerian man, we are the real man. And one of the things we said to ourselves 16 years ago was, when I was still back then, and when, and when, I, when I was called by I, I said, look, let's, what are you doing in the city bank? It's a fun bank. Let's come home and build it. They do have it will be allowed. And that was a good thing he said to me that moved me because at that time it was clearly inconceivable to this civil of Nigeria for access to before I left. And today we are all glad that we did because uh, our dreams are coming true. But with not that happen, not that certain values and principles that we hold here. So today, um, I will just leave you with five, four things that he said I should talk about. Four. And we come with some of the principles that we that encourage us and that we work with. The first is the power of choice. We choose who we are and we choose who we become. As we talk to the young entrepreneurs here, they have to understand that the power of what of choice is in their hands. And they choose who they will be and what they will become. Very important. Very important. Because the choices we make today will determine who we are tomorrow. The second is the power of value. The power of value. We choose our values. And the values that we live by determine how we operate today. And, and determine the decisions that we take in business and in personal life. 
When we come to the point of dilemma, the junction, your values are the moral compass that, that tell you whether to go right or that good or bad. Values are key. You want to build to last, you have to have values that you live by. The third is the power of, of productivity. You have to be positive. Because as you set out the life, the world by default is naturally not in your favor. Things don't naturally work in people's favor. And so you have to have a mind that is positive. Approach the, the issues head on. Do not shy away from problems. Because problems always are opportunities for growth and for greatness. And so you have to always positive. And, and the fourth is you have to create value. You have to create value. Value is what people buy. So whether you are a small company or a big company, value is what people buy. Value is the is what you create as somebody is ready to invest in or to pay for. No matter how creative you are, if you don't solve the problem, you don't make money. You have to create value. Value is what people are ready to invest in, value to people are ready to pay for. And maybe the very last thing I also want to mention here is something I call the, the power of self-management. You know, let me see. Today, people talk about time management as, if, as one of the problems that we have in front of the world. But it's not really an issue of time management. It's a problem of self management. You can only go as far as you know. So knowledge is not only financial, it's not only moral, it's not only... But we need to have self-management. That will determine how we go. The limits that we go is determine money that our weaknesses. They are the ones that us from going as far as we hope to go. So self-discipline is very, very essential. So five things, five things that Herbert wants me to come across. The value of, of trust, the, the need to create value always, the value of, of productivity, and the value of self-development. And I hope that um, with that, let us close by saying that Axel and his crowd will be associated with this, this uh, workshop today. And we are hoping that this will not be the last or the first. If this is only the first and not the last. We are hoping that this continues, that every and this becomes a spark that will lead to this part of the country to do new things. And we begin to hear from now the things that will happen because people are came to, to this event and help people talk. Thank you very much. I wish you very much. I felt even more elated. And I felt even more, uh, have more respect for his thoughts because uh, this is what I believe in as a person, which is about building capacity, developing young people, and being able to make a difference. And making a difference starts with the young ones because whether we like it or not, a few years to come, a few decades, some of us will not be standing here talking. Young people who are sitting over here will be the ones driving the system and that will come. If we fail to invest, it gives me great pleasure on the true sense of commitment and patriotism to be invited to deliver the keynote address on a subject of very critical value to an audience that I feel truly at home with. It gives me the privilege to share my experiences with some of the Nigerian finance entrepreneurs, corporate giants, businessmen and women, and the general audience. I am honored and sincerely thank the convener, the chairman of the Senate Family Group, Stanley Kuzochu, for the opportunity. Let me elaborate here also. The fact that the executive governor of Anambra State with the time schedule he has, he's sitting here today to honor this uh, sense of message. 
And the message is that he believes in what is going on here today. He believes in building capacity amongst the young ones, and he believes in the development of our member state. The theme of our discussion today centers around success. Success can be defined in various ways. A few of the definitions that the elaborate success are the achieving of results wanted or hoped for. The second is accomplishment of an aim or purpose. The third is the achievement of a high position in a particular field, for example, in politics or business. It is nearly impossible to define success in one sentence. However, it is important to note that success is not to be confused with what amounts to speed of success. Two different issues. In some cases, Success comes at a quicker pace, and in others, it may come more slowly. In addition, success can be achieved after several attempts. What is important is accomplishment of set goals that are generally measurable one way or the other. But the following key components of success we, take, we need to take note of. One is patience, the second is resilience, and associated with resilience is tenacity. And then of course, faith. Before I continue, I want to use this opportunity once again to thank a few months after he was sworn in, I had a word with him. Then there was this rumor that the Anna Cross State government would be buying uh, Toyota vehicles. And I spoke to his excellency, I said, is this true? He said, no, that is not true. And you will recollect and know that from inception to today, the Anacra State Government has been patronizing us. <laughs> that is the way we have to act in order to help build ourselves. You look at infrastructure, I'll give you this. One is believe yourself. Number two, never allow challenges to tell you. Number three, Show resilience and tenacity in pursuing your goals. Number four, acquire necessary skills, particularly education, whether formal or informal. Maintain very high integrity in your dealings and business. Maintain good balance between your hard work and physical situation. Because if you are not physically okay, your health is not okay, you can be very Show compassion and love to the less privileged while making sure that your mode of help is important. Does not create business in people being helped. <laughs> you teach people how to fish and not necessarily keep giving them fish all the time if you want it to live. Finally, and most importantly to me, as a person, what I believe in is to trust in the Almighty God and it by wholeheartedly and genuinely in the teachings of our Lord Jesus. Thank you very much. I stayed there for about 30 minutes and I was, in, I was very impressed about uh, what he was doing then and the plans he had. I encouraged him to come over to Anambra State to do that investment instead of going to Joss. Uh, I'm sure most of you that know him will know his name with uh, Joss. You know, and, uh, he did come. He came, he saw, and I believe he conquered. <laughs> Not only that uh, we made it possible for him to be in this environment, we are now, because of what he did here, we gave him an additional opportunity at Osobo, where he's doing a fantastic work. He wants to set up he wants to set up the biggest in Nigeria uh, uh, where they wear uh, special bits of uh, cow from their produce milk. Uh, uh, you know, package uh, the beef in a special way and export them. Uh, I'm always interested in export so that you can make more export. You know. so He's a big guy. I, I used to call him, this time I want to address him, I say you're usefulness. Uh, that's the title he gets. You are usefulness. 
they are improved the other things. You know. So your usefulness, I'm happy to be at that event. So, to, to speak to the youth and to also to declare it public. I want to also recognize the good friend of mine, uh, the party. It's very important. Two weeks ago, we had almost a similar session. Uh, a round table where we discussed uh, 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 beyond infrastructure. The truth, ladies and gentlemen, is that uh, uh, what made us reach the last century is not going to make us reach this century. It's very important. And don't be deceived when they say the youths are the future leaders. I do not agree. You are the leaders right now. All you need to do is to get prepared. You should know where the world is headed. That's why in Anapra State, we are advising the school curricula to reflect from SS1 through SS3, uh, give them uh, uh, materials that will enable them to write Microsoft exam at school start level and live with it. You know. Way in making them very useful and uh, important uh, people in the society. The era of uh, uh, what most of us are doing, I mean, uh, some of our citizen business people uh, will not last. If you recall, many years ago, uh, our people are used to have sons limited. <laughs> and when they die, uh, for your information, that business dies. Most of them are, are still not learning the lessons, and we are working hard. I, I have a department uh, in the Ministry of Finance uh, who, continue, on a continuous basis, educate all these are rich people that are not seeing them, are not seeing far. I'll give you an example. I told, I asked somebody, look, if you drop dead today, this business that you are famous in will die. You said no, you cannot die. You had and he employed too many, there's so many Indians working for him. <laughs> that, that was his comfort, that the uh, Indians are working uh, for him. He, he forgets that those Indians can be sent home overnight by the wife if, uh, if the man is dead. You know. So we keep trying to push him into uh, capital market because uh, uh, quite a lot of the Europeans have done well in that area, better than the you know, And that's the way to go. So I would encourage you to uh, invite this culture of, uh, uh, of course, ICT, this culture of uh, uh, creative economy, you know, uh, culture of artificial intelligence. That is where the world is headed. And if we do so, by the way, Anambra has the best, the most brilliant set of youths you can meet anywhere in the world. And we need to channel that those uh, energy and uh, direct them in a manner that makes sense. You need to apply what you learn. You know people say knowledge is power. Is that not what they say? Yes. But that's not true. Knowledge is not power. What is power is knowledge utilized. <laughs> knowledge utilized from today, let it. Knowledge is not power. If you are going to be with the good children, you have the knowledge that we are going to have to each other there. So you must apply the knowledge so that it can become power. You know, so uh, I, I like this set, uh, section and this program that Stanley is uh, doing. I, uh, despite uh, the very passion I have today, I told him that I will attend this event and uh, talk to the youth a bit, you know. So I really uh, would encourage you, we, uh, when the Commissioner for Youth and the Creative Economy speaks, you see the portal that you have opened for yourselves. You know, we want to guide you accordingly. Uh, it's not only for people that are in the secondary school, even those that are graduated, that are lawyers, accountants, whatever you are, 
you know, uh, it can guide you a right to imbibe the new culture and go to where the world is headed. Uh, and in a very short time, you start making money from home. You can make money from home. You know, uh, I always see the opportunity when I address you is to warn them about drugs. Uh, please stay out of drugs. That will destroy you, I, I tell you that. Drugs will do what? Yeah. Stay out of it. Avoid this cultism. 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 Bravado. You know, all this kind of uh, life. It's not going to lead you anywhere. It, it's taking you straight to, to hell. It, it, on earth. <laughs> so you, you go to two hells. One of them. <laughs> Listen carefully to the, uh, the discussions and uh, jot down points that have been made. It will go a long way in helping you. Bear in mind, I repeat, what made us rich the last century is not going to make us rich this century. Except that's a paradigm shift, very serious paradigm shift. You know, starting with the curricula in schools that will emphasize where the world is headed, it will be difficult to compete uh, uh, outside the environment. You know, so you will listen uh, to this discussion uh, very well, and uh, I'll see this opportunity to wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous uh, New Year. I for the for the uh, uh, people visiting outside. Coming into Anambra, please enjoy the peace and tranquility we have here. Uh, try and have fun. We have great places you can go to. Uh, Club Road, I've been there once. <laughs>